Greetings Traveller, I'm Snapjilly and today I wanted to talk a little bit about bows and arrows and specifically long bows. You see, uh, you have probably already heard about the debate if a long bow could penetrate plate armor. Uh, I'm here to tell you two things. One is probably not, and I'm gonna reiterate that a little bit later, and two is it honestly doesn't really matter if a longbow can penetrate plate armor. And um, here's why. You see, I wanted to talk about this because not that long ago, a couple days ago actually, I once again heard somebody talk, uh, talk uh, high and mighty about how longbows and longbow arrows, they, they break through plate armor as if it's nothing. That, my friends, is false. I will not say that longbows can break through plate armor on certain spots in certain occasions, but for you to say that a longbow arrow will break through plate is just that's false. All right, um, because one thing that I want to say is um, basically the thing that everybody calls for when when they want to want to praise the longbow is the Battle of Ashtincourt, obviously because uh, the British versus the French and the British were outnumbered and they had longbows and they won. Therefore, they won because of longbows. That has to be the case. Well, actually, it's it's not the case. Undoubtedly, the longbow played a huge role in the eventual victory of the British. But, like, what do we know about the Battle of Ashtincourt, for example? Uh, when, okay, first you had the cavalry charge from the French. Um, as far as we know, that did nothing. The, the cavalry, they just died. They got belted with arrows. Uh, but the main force of the French were foot soldiers. Now, um... Those foot soldiers, with their plate armor, not all of them would have worn full plate, but well, let's just say that they had plate. Um, they would have been pelted with arrows continuously from all sides. Right? And it's not like in the movies what you see a lot on TV is, uh, of course, you see two armies march together on a huge open field and then they yell, charge, and they just start running towards each other, screaming. That doesn't happen in real life, okay? Because if you sprint such a long distance before you actually reach your opponent, uh, you're just gonna be fucking winded by the time you actually reach that. No, you march up to your opponent. You walk, essentially. It's a fast-paced walk, but it's still, it's a walk. And also we know that the Battle of Ashtingor, the, the, the ground is very muddy. It was difficult to walk through. So basically what happened is the French, they walked up to the British lines in muddy ground uh, it would have been very heavy to plow through, so they wouldn't have been very fast. Continuously getting pelted with arrows, left and right, thousands of arrows. And we know that they made it to the lines and engaged in melee combat. How do we know this? Well, quite simply, Henry V, the English, very, also very famous about the Battle of Ashkor, is that he actually killed his prisoners, uh, which was which weren't allowed to do at the time, it was against the rules of war. But um, his prisoners, the, the French prisoners, that he, the French people that he took prisoner became so numerous that uh, he felt the need to kill them. Well, here's the thing. You cannot take somebody's prisoner if he's already dead, right? So if you kill somebody dead with a longbow arrow, uh, he's not a prisoner. No, the, the people who would have been taken prisoner were, would, would maybe have been wounded because of arrows and picked up somewhere, or most of them would have engaged in melee combat and eventually uh, surrendered and then taken prisoner. So, uh, yay, great victory for the longbow, I suppose, but just a, a, quite a numerous amount of foot soldiers still made it to the enemy lines, to uh, the, the lines of, of, of the English and engaged in melee combat. So, uh, what did you say again? The longbow arrows, they can break through plate as if it's nothing? Okay, sure. Uh, thing is though, you see a lot of, of like either armor tests or uh, weapon tests here on YouTube or, or anywhere and um, most of them I don't really like. It's not that they're not entertaining to watch but it's always kind of... Um, very often the armor is very bad. It's costume armor. It's basically a tin can roughly in the shape of a chest plate or whatever. And then they shoot it with some sort of a bow and some sort of an arrow that you don't get any details about but they shoot it and then the arrow penetrates like this much. Pretty much. It goes. And then you go, whoa, look at that. The arrow, he penetrated the armor and, and stuff like that. And I'm like, first, that's not that's not a that's not an accurate chest plate. Okay? Most of the time it's absolute garbage what they use for armor. And I'm like, um, if you use an accurate chest plate, like a hardened steel, that wouldn't have happened. But it doesn't matter because your arrow only penetrated this much. 
if somebody would be wearing that, the chest plate is going to be, you know, it's not going to be skin tight, it's going to be extended a bit, they wouldn't even touch you. You would not hurt the person underneath. So, so yeah, your arrow penetrated the armor a bit, but you didn't actually do anything. You didn't hurt anybody. What you did was you created a hole in, in the armor and the person underneath is fine. So in the, what did you achieve actually? Is that a victory for the arrow? I think not. There are some accounts of, of uh, arrows piercing the sides of the visors. And that's the second thing I would say is that um, of course, an arrow gets stronger the closer your opponent is. If you pelt arrows at somebody like from a super far distance, there's no chance that you're gonna break through plate. At a very close distance, if you have a very heavy um, bound war bow, then in some cases in weak spots of the armor, I could see it breaking through. I wouldn't count on it happening, but I think it could happen. Here's the other thing that I want to say. It doesn't really matter if it happens though, because arrows, are not made to break through armor. But Jelly, I play chivalry medieval warfare and I know that botkin arrows are, are, are specifically designed to break through armor. Yes, but not plate armor. Botkin arrows are made to pierce mail, essentially to break the links of mail. And uh, if you have long botkin arrows, th those could also be used to, you know, um, pierce thick gambesons and stuff like that not plate armor. Uh, what you would do against... Bows could be effective against people in plate armor, and that's essentially because plate armor never covers you completely all the way. There's gaps in armor, and uh, if you're gonna pelt somebody with arrows constantly, then at some point, logically, he would get stuck in a gap in the armpit, in the eye slit, somewhere where he's not armored or not as heavily armored, uh, or perhaps in a weak spot in the armor where it could possibly break through and hurt him most likely not kill him, but depending on where it is, if the side of the visor gets in his head, then he could, he would be dead, of course. But not only that, not everybody is going to be wearing full plate armor, right? If you have somebody in full plate harness, then it's it's unlikely that he's going to die from arrow fire. But uh, there's lots of people that do, don't wear full plate armor. And if you pelt those with arrows, then yeah, it's just a matter of time before they get stuck somewhere where there's no armor and die, or at least get wounded. That's the point of, of arrow fire, essentially. It it's, was never intended for arrows to be able to break through a plate harness. So for people to argue for or against if an arrow can break through a plate harness, I mean, maybe it could, but it was never intended to, so why would you expect it to? The thing that we do know, though, is that armor is always domed. Right, very rarely armor is flat, pieces of armor is always uh, curved a bit. It is made so that attacks, not only arrows, but any attack glances off. Right, so that uh, effectively decreases the penetrative power of, of an attack, including arrows, right? Um, it doesn't mean that an arrow has absolutely no chance of penetrating. It could, in some cases. But, you know, our, we do know armor is made to significantly increase the chance that an attack from anything but also arrows glance off rather than um, focusing all the energy on one spot and breaking through the armor. Now we also know that uh, arrows do not have a lot of mass behind them, all right? The strength from an arrow comes from the poundage of the bow and if you shoot in a straight line at a relatively short distance then your arrow has the most power. You have arrow, I might make a new video about like arrow range because that's <laughs> That's a whole different thing. But if you shoot an arrow up and let it fall down on the enemy, it doesn't have much strength and it will never, ever get through armor of any kind. Uh, but if you, you shoot in a straight line, then the arrow has the most force and it has uh, technically the highest chance of penetrating uh, armor or anything. But uh, people who shoot heavy bows would probably know that if you shoot an arrow into something solid, like a tree or a chest plate, whatever, the arrow will most likely break. Um, because arrows are um, very light, they are in a way flexible, they actually have to flex in order to, for you to be able to release them from the bow. If you actually look at slow-mo footage, you see the arrow flexing quite a lot. Um, so logically, most of the time, not 100% of the time, but a huge majority of the time, when an arrow, even when shot from a he very heavy pounded bow, he hits a very solid object that is so much heavier than it, like a person in a harness, that is also still domed, making, increasing the chance that it slides off, then the 
arrow on it's just gonna shatter on impact it's gonna leave a little scratch and for the most part it's gonna do nothing that is just what will most likely happen if you hit somebody in the armor with an arrow but that's if you hit them in the armor with the arrow and logically like with anything if possible you wouldn't want to hit somebody in the armor you would want to hit them next to the armor also if you're sword fighting or or any kind of fighting if somebody's wearing armor or a helmet if, if your opponent is just wearing a helmet and you're sword fighting that's the thing you're not gonna hit that's the thing you won't aim for because that's the thing that is protected you can hit him anywhere else to kill him but not the head because that's protected and it's in a similar way uh, way with arrows maybe less accurate if you're just pelting the enemy randomly but essentially the point of it is hoping or trying to get your opponents in spots that are not armored right not in spots that are and definitely not trying to break through the spots that are or perhaps if you'd want to break through spots that are armored you would want to break through spots that are less armored like mail or um, gambeson or something like that because breaking through plate with an arrow it's just not gonna happen. It, there's a slight chance, but it's so unlikely, you, you shouldn't count on it. So, that's basically what I wanted to say for this video. If you stuck around this long, you might as well subscribe, also follow me on social media, link is in the description below, and thank you for joining my quest, and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye guys.